name is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 mass market game substitutes. Now, for those of you who are not aware, a mass market game is something that's basically made by Hasbro. Um, however, there is a non-Hasbro game on this that has kind of become a mass market uh, game, in a way. Uh, that's just, and, uh, and now, before we get fully started, I want to point out that all the games on these, on this list is my personal opinion. Just because it's on this list does not mean I hate it. Well, there's one. But, you know, if you've watched this channel, you know which one it is. Um, there's one that I don't, I really don't like, but I don't hate the person who likes it. So if you like the mass market game, I don't hate I do not dislike you in any way. That's it. This is just, if you're getting a little tired of mass market games, this is a good substitute so it can ease you into the hobby of board gaming. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, at number 10, we have the game Yahtzee. Um, you know, Yahtzee, when I was a kid, was one of my favorite games to play with my grandmother. She taught me how to play that game. I loved playing the game. It was really fun, especially when I learned how to do all the different stuff and everything. Uh, so for those of you who do like Yahtzee, um, Elder Sign is what I suggest. And uh, as the mass market games will be over here, the, the non-mass, the mass market substitutes will be here. Um, Elder Sign is a great dice game. It works very much, it works similar. It's not exactly the same. Um, you roll dice and you have to kind of like collect sets of different symbols and everything in order to move through, through the game. Um, this was one of the first games I taught on this channel. Um, it was one of the games, it is probably the game that got me into the board gaming hobby as a whole uh, and everything like that. So this game is really fun. It's great. I like the theme. I like the artwork on the cards and everything. It is, it is kind of one of our favorite games here. Um, so yeah, number 10, Yahtzee Substitute Elder Sign. All right, number nine is Clue. Um, Clue was a game that I played when I was a kid. My favorite character always to play. Weird. My favorite color is purple, but my favorite character to play, I was, play as was always Colonel Mustard. I never really liked playing as, as Plum, which is odd because he wore purple. I never figured out why, why I always liked to play as Mustard. Um, but if you like Clue, then you're going to like Mysterium. Mysterium is very, very similar. The only difference is, the major difference is instead of you're working to get Instead of you're competing against each other to figure out who killed Mr. Body, that's a Clue movie reference right there for those of you who didn't get it. Um, for those of you who, you know, you kind of work against each other for figuring out who killed Mr. Body, this Mysterium works in a different way. You are psychics and detective psychics, and you're trying to kind of work together to figure out who murdered someone, but each, each uh, investigator has their own murder suspect, location, and weapon. Then at the end, you all have to kind of work together to figure out who the true suspect is. Um, so this, it's a really good substitute for that. Um, also another one is Obscurio, but Mysterium has a lot more, to me, has a lot more elements of clue in it. So that's why I'm suggesting Mysterium. So to conclude, number nine, clue, if you like that, Mysterium is your game. All right, uh, number eight is Risk. Uh, for those of you who like are unaware, Risk is a game of world domination. Um, you get like little plastic uh, miniatures of soldiers, and you put them all over in these different countries around the world, and you uh, try to take out take over the different territories and everything, the one who, who I believe has the most territories wins. Well, if you like that game, then 
I would substitute that with Game of Thrones, the board game by uh, Fantasy Flight. Um, Elder Sign also by Fantasy Flight. I want to point that out. We don't have that many um, Fantasy Flight stuff on here. I promise. But, um, you know, Game of Thrones... Game of Thrones, the board game, it's like Risk, except the, the major difference is you have to keep track of your food supply um, to get bring out your army. Unlike Risk, you can't just keep dumping out like soldiers and soldiers and soldiers and soldiers and soldiers. No, you got to keep your food supply intact so you can feed your army. Uh, also, there's like a time limit. Once you hit to that 10 and you haven't completely gotten to the main goal of the game, which is to get seven victory points altogether, if you haven't gotten there, whoever's the farthest on the victory track is the winner. And, you know, if there's a tie, there is no ties, really. There's no tie. There is no middle ground in the Game of Thrones. You win or you die. Um, but, yes, number eight, risk. Substi you substitute risk, Game of Thrones. Okay, so number seven, if you like the game Dominoes, and any variation of that, then you will like King Domino. Um, dominoes, you know, it's very similar. You got to put down, a, lay down a do domino that matches uh, the number on the do on the previous domino that your opponent put down. I believe the first one out of dominoes wins. I may be wrong. Put that down in the comments below. If that's correct, if it's not correct, put that also down in the comments below. Um, I've, uh, you know, I like King Domino. You do have to match up the, you do have to match up the different terrains. So it's like, you know, field with a field. But the difference is you, you don't have to 100% match. It just has to be 1% match. So if one, one side's like fields and the other side is like a, a lake, well, then you can put down the fields and have the lake next to, like, a forest or whatever. It doesn't need to fully um, match. That's kind of how dominoes works, too, I believe. Um, I think King Domino is really good. Kids can play it, too. I mean, kids can play dominoes, too. I, mean, I think they're both really good for getting kids to play that. But, you know, if you want to kind of step away from dominoes, and you, King Domino is definitely the game for you. Okay, so number six, if you like Connect Four, then you will like Quattro. Um, sorry, Quarto, not Quattro. Quarto. Uh, Quarto is a game where you have to connect four in a row, but it doesn't have to be like four specific. So you can have four pieces that are tall, four pieces that are short, four pieces that are the like darker color, uh, darker brown and um, a lighter brown, they're wooden, so, um, but I, I do enjoy this game. I can't find my copy for some reason. I, I have a copy of that game somewhere around here, but I think it's a very fun game. Uh, it was like one of the, it was like one of the first non-mass market games I, I bought recently. You know, it's kind of weird I'm making this, uh, mass market game substitute video. Most of the games that I'm saying are now coming into the mass market, so it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, number six, if you like Connect Four, you'll like Quarto. All right, number five, if you like apples to apples, then I suggest try Bring Your Own Book. Um, Bring Your Own Book is very similar to apples to apples. You have a judge. The judge asks a question from a card, but... There are no answer cards. You don't have a hand of answer cards. Um, you have a book. And you look up your answers in your book. And then they pick which answer you, they like. And then, and then you pass your books around, so that way you can't keep looking in the same book, which makes it very interesting. Um, Jordan taught, how, taught uh, how to play Bring Your Own Book. And, uh, you know, for any of the, the videos, again, for any of these that I have a how to play video, I will put the, the links in the in each respective video. So it should be up 
somewhere, wherever it pops up. Um, and I'll also put some of these down in the description below, too. That way we can check them out. But, uh, you know, it's fun because you can try any kind of book. It doesn't have to be like a, you know, non-picture book. We, one time we played Bring Your Own Book, and Jordan's uh, father, my father-in-law, uh, he picked, uh, I believe it was The Death of Superman, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and it was so easy because one time we had to pick a newspaper, um, and so I was like, oh, this is so easy. Daily Planet, Daily Planet, Daily Planet. Where's the Daily Planet? There it is! And uh, it was it was just, uh, it was really fun. Bring your own, substitute apples to apples with bring your own book. Okay, so number four is the Settlers of Catan. And you substitute Settlers of Catan for Rise of Tribes. I have nothing against Settlers of Catan. This is a great, it's a great gateway game. Um, I believe that, I think it's on our top 10 gateway games list. It might not be though. I can't, I cannot remember. But, um, in, um, you know, in Settlers of Catan, you roll a die and if you roll that number, then you get that resource and everything and you can trade and everything. Um, I would say Rise of Tribes. Also, I think that would be a pretty good gateway game, too. The major difference between Catan and Rise of Tribes, and the reason why I'm saying Catan is the mass market game, because it's kind of a game that's been out for so long that it itself is kind of becoming a mass market game, in my opinion. If you guys disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. But in my opinion, Catan is kind of becoming a mass market game. I, again, nothing wrong with that. Congratulations. Uh, but Rise of Tribes, really good. You get like these little workers and you place them on different areas and they get resources to you. But you also can advance in like tools. So it's like, you know, Catan meets Stone Age a bit. You know, you have different tiles that give you different resources. The only difference is um, you don't have to say, hey, will anybody trade me this? wood for this fish or something like that. You just have that and then you can, you know, there's ways you can increase gathering your, your resources so you have all the food and, and other resources and your opponents are like, you know, still trying to figure out how to make tools. But, yeah, so number four, Settlers of Catan. Substitute Settlers of Catan for Rise of Tribe. Okay, so, number three, Scrabble. Uh, again, this is another one I played with my grandmother. Um, I hated playing it because I don't, even to this day, I don't have a big vocabulary. Um, my, my grandparents always had the bigger vocabulary. My grandmother especially had a big vocabulary. Um, and I always kind of hated playing that game um, just because I don't know how to spell. Like, I know words. But spelling, knowing words and spelling words are like two different things, you know. So it's like you get to a point in your life, you know, when you're when you're younger, you learn how to spell words. When you're older, <laughs> spelling words doesn't really feel that important to you. It's just knowing the words, knowing the meaning of the words, um, saying the words. Those those seem important to you as an adult. Um, knowing how to spell the word is like. Do I really need to do this? But um, the substitute for Scrabble is a game called Bananagrams. Um, Bananagrams, I believe, is played similar to Scrabble or exactly the same. Um, but I don't think you, you don't place it on a board. You just get this bag, it's a banana, and then you unzip it and there's all these like little tiles of um, letters all around so you can just kind of um, spell your own words. I do not have a how to play video on this one, so you don't have to worry. Nothing's going to pop up. Um, but yeah, number three, Scrabble. Check out Bananagrams.
number two is if you like Uno, then you'll like Llama. Um, it's kind of funny that my number two is Uno, which means one. So I thought that, that that's kind of funny that number two is number one. <laughs> but anyways, you know, as you know, Uno is a card game that you mostly play when you're bored out of your mind. Um, I don't know if anybody else has done that, but, you know, when you're waiting for somebody, like, for your doctor's appointment or you, you know, you're, you're kind of like, um, you know, you're, you're waiting for your siblings to be done with something or your mom or dad is in a meeting, they always whip out Uno out of, your mom would always, my mom would always bring Uno, she'd whip it out of her purse and she'd be like, okay, you boys, shuffle the deck and start playing. Um, we'd start playing Uno, and I, I, my friends would see that we're playing Uno, and they'd join in, and we'd be playing Uno and everything. And then it's like time to leave, and we're like, no, let us finish Uno. But you can substitute that with Llama. Llama is very much like Uno. Um, the major difference is they got rid of the, you know, skip a guy, um, they... They, they got rid of the, you know, switch places, like all the stuff that, all the mess with people cards in Uno. So it's just, you know, one to Llama, whereas like, you know, you play down a card, then you have to play either, so it's like if I play to one, then I have to put, then Jordan has to play a one or two. And then if, then if Jordan does play a two, then my dad needs to play a two or three, and so on and so forth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the llama, when you get to the heist, you play a llama, and then you have to play another llama, or you have to start all over again from one. So you can really kind of mess with your opponents. And then whatever, whatever people have left over, that's how much they have to, tokens they have to get. And the first one to, like, I think it was 45, loses the game which is very weird because, you know, usually it's like the first one to this many points wins the game. This is like one of those few games where it's like the first one to get a huge number of points loses the game. Um, and then if you succeed in winning, you can get ri rid of your chips um, to decrease your numbers and everything. Um, but, yeah, uh, that would be number two. If you like Uno, check out Llama. All right, here we go. Number one, if you like Monopoly, then you'll love Machi Koro. So, just like Monopoly, you're kind of building, you know, this economical empire, you know, but instead of stepping on a space and going, oh, no, I have to give you this much money, you have to roll a certain number. So if you roll a three, then that means someone went into your cafe and they have to pay you money. Um, for each cafe, by the way. So if you build more cafes, you get uh, you get more money from people. And there's also a family family diner that can also charge people money too. Um, I am pretty good at Machi Koro. I, I do enjoy Machi Koro a lot. Um, it is one of my favorite games to play, which is weird because, you know, Monopoly, I, I don't like playing Monopoly that much anymore. But Machi Koro, I'll play that all day. Uh, there is no how to play video, unfortunately, on Machi Koro on this channel. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I would definitely suggest to check that out. So if you like Monopoly, Machi Koro is your game. Well, there you go. There's my top 10 mass market gaming substitutes. Um, if you have a different list than what I just listed, please put it down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think is good substitutes for certain mass market games. Uh, if you disagreed with me on any of these games, please put that down in the comments below as well. I would love to hear your uh, your disagreements. Also, you know, why you disagree. Um, that'd be nice. Um, I also, yeah, I kind of want to hear that. Um, just your opinion in general. Um, you know, have you tried to get some, and I also would like to know, have you tried to get some of your friends or family out of the mass market game um, uh area and into this uh, board gaming hobby. Tell them that there's more more to board gaming than just Monopoly. Um, but if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. 
hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be notified for videos just like these. We always do a top tens video at the last Friday of every month, so which is always so much fun to do. I do enjoy them. Little part of me wishes I did it for two days, but I kind of need to get a little more up there in order for me to uh, do two a week because these are these are big time consumers and uh, it takes away from like the how to play videos. Um, but yeah, be on the lookout for our next top tens list for next month. But until then, thanks for the views.